Popular Instagram model and influencer Janae Garnier, 33, who was also known as Miss Mercedes Moore, was recently found dead in her Houston area apartment. She was the unfortunate victim of a murder-suicide. The man suspected of killing her was Kevin Alexander Accordo, 34. Police say Kevin Accordo lived in Florida and did not know Janae. His only criminal record, traffic violations. He was also found at the scene. He died from, quote, multiple sharp force trauma, according to the medical examiner who ruled his death a suicide. There was reportedly no sign of forced entry, but neither the police nor Janae's family believed that she knew Accordo. Miss Mercedes Moore had developed a strong social media following across multiple platforms, including 2.6 million followers on Instagram alone. She had become famous in the entertainment industry. I can't remember where I got this, but her quote, stunning and daring photos on Instagram drew hundreds of thousands of likes. I can't find the article that I got that from. So I'm citing that it's not mine, but I, I'm not sure where it came from. But I really like that when I was looking at her photos Stunning and daring, definitely, are good descriptives. Her father, Mark Garnier, went to his daughter's apartment on Sunday evening to check on her because her family hadn't heard from her all weekend. I know my daughter. When I got to my daughter's house and it was locked up and she's not answering my phone call, which is not like her, I knew something was up. So I didn't hesitate to kick the door down, Mark said. When he went in, he found his daughter already deceased at the bottom of her staircase. He thought it might have been an accident, but when he went upstairs, him and his girlfriend found Janae's killer. What happened on Sunday was the family's worst nightmare. Attacked, they say, by a stalker. How this guy found her, um, I don't know, but me walking in and finding my daughter and finding him, um, Committing suicide was just something that a parent should never bear. Accordo had a knife stuck in his neck. One thing that I saw said that Mark believed that he stabbed himself in the neck when he heard Mark break down the door. He was twitching, he was gurgling, Mark said. I could look in the room and see there were writings all over the wall, written with lipstick or pens were rambling messages containing confessions, apologies, and professed love for Janae. The medical examiner ruled Janae's death a homicide. She was strangled and suffered a traumatic concussion, according to the Fort Bend County Medical Examiner. Richmond investigators are working to figure out how Cordo found Janae and how he got into her apartment. Richmond Police Lieutenant Lowell Nynest, probably butchering that, said that their investigation continues. He said, we know what happened and we know when, we just want to know why. My monthly conversation is, Janae, you have all these followers, some probably because they love you, some because they like your look, some more crazy, and some obsessed, her father Mark said. Her family believes that Okorda was just that, a crazed follower who stalked Janae and somehow found her. Family members told investigators that Janae did not have a personal relationship with the suspect. First of all, I'm including Janae's murder as an intimate partner homicide because it was. It's just that she wasn't necessarily a willing participant in the intimate partner part of it entirely. In intimate partner murder suicides, the perpetrator believes that losing their partner is worse than death itself. They don't want to live anymore if they can't live with their partner. And that is what Accordo was experiencing most likely. According to stalkingriskprofile.com, there are five types of stalking. I would say that their five types are really more like motives than types, but they include the rejected stalker, the resentful stalker, the intimacy-seeking stalker, the incompetent suitor, and the predatory stalker. The incompetent suitor comes from a place of loneliness or lust and targets strangers or people not well known to the perpetrator. Their motivation is to get a date or even sometimes a sexual relationship with this person. An intimacy seeking stalker, which is what I would probably classify this guy as, comes from a place of loneliness and a desire for connection. They also target strangers and people that they don't know well, but their motivation is close, intimate relationship with that person. And often they have some type of mental illness that within it they already are fantasizing and delusioning even that they're already in a romantic relationship with the victim. 
In this case, it could have been either of the two because Janae's provocative pictures on social media and her OnlyFans account both allow for a level of vulnerability from her and her fans could really easily experience that as a type of intimacy. Throw in there's some mental health issues on their part and you have a stalker who believes that he's in an intimate relationship with somebody that he really isn't. Especially if there's communication, the way that I understand OnlyFans to be where they can request something and the person can accommodate this. So he could have been communicating with her and her responding within the context of that interaction, but he took it to a very different place in his mind. To him, they were intimately and romantically involved. The pictures that have been published of his writings on her walls, and I think that there's more that wasn't published, which would make sense because it's an ongoing investigation, but they say things like, I wish I never loved her. I should have stayed in Florida. I was used and then underneath it for money. Those all speak to a man who traveled to see her, who expected a romantic relationship, and who wasn't happy when he found out that that wasn't reality. On top of that, she was strangled to death, which is a very intimate and very angry way to murder somebody. It's sort of like stabbing, but different. To shoot somebody is fairly easy. Most people can do it. There's a You don't have to be close to them. You don't have to feel anything. You may or may not even need to see see anything depending on what you're shooting them with and how far away they are. It's not super personal. To be strangling somebody to death, you are face to face with them. You are looking into their eyes and you are there in that extreme rage anger moment. It's a very much a power and control move. I want to take a second to remind you or let you know if you don't know about the book that I wrote called In Case I'm Murdered what you should know about stalking, domestic violence, sexual abuse, and how to stay safe. It is available on Amazon in print as well as ebook and it's available on audible.com as an audiobook. If you are interested, I am looking for some reviews for the audiobook and I have some codes so that you can listen to it for free in exchange for a review. This is really important information, regardless of whether you want to leave a review or not. If you are at all concerned for your well-being, as far as domestic violence goes, as far as being a woman goes, this is an excellent resource for you. I hope that you'll check it out. Richmond Police Lieutenant Lowell Nainas urged people to be careful while using social media, and I appreciate the fact that he took this opportunity to put this in here because she had a big following, and she was friends with lots of other people with big followings, but there's all kinds of people that are up and coming famous people who also need to know this, and maybe, maybe not have access to this information yet. Maybe they've not even considered it. People still can identify you. You, the lieutenant said. Somewhere in the process of setting up your site, you used your real name. You used information that people have access to whether you believe it or not. He said it's easier to find where a photo was taken than most people think. When you post pictures on social media, there's a tracking on cameras that tell you where the picture was taken, especially on cell phones. And I would be interested to know, I have heard that if you take your location off on your cell phone, then it doesn't show up in the metadata of pictures. Do you have any idea if that's true or not? If you do, let me know in the comments below because it would be good information to share with other people. And then the lieutenant recommended that people with a big social media presence use the protections that are set up there for them, keep their sites private, don't allow just anybody in, make people request to be your friend or request to be a part of your community, and you approve or deny them instead of making it open for anybody to come in. Which I understand if you're wanting to grow your audience and your following, then you want as many people in there as possible. But that's not necessarily the safest thing. He said that taking the extra steps can help keep people safe. I know that that's true from my time on Twitter because I knew people who, they call it doxing, and they would come up with people's addresses, phone numbers, kids' phone numbers. They knew all kinds of information, personal, private information about people, and they say that it's not really all that hard. So people who just blindly believe that people aren't going to find them which is not what it sounds like is the case for her. She had taken steps to try to protect herself and protect her privacy, and those steps even were not enough. So for the lay person, the normal person who doesn't necessarily put any steps in place, you are extremely vulnerable. And obviously, even if you do put steps in place to protect your safety and your privacy, that does not guarantee that somebody who's determined enough isn't going to make it through.
Her mother and father say that they have lost the brightest light in their family. To her parents and other family and friends, 33-year-old Janae Gagné was so much more than an Instagram model. She was special. Just like she had the million, you know, a few million followers, that's all fine and good. But she was a person, and we miss her a lot. Janae was loved, funny, goofy, um, crazy as hell. I know, and I shouldn't say that about my daughter, but that's my daughter. That was our baby, said her mother, Janetta. They described their oldest daughter as a dependable and loving big sister, a daddy's girl, and her mother's best friend. Yesterday was the worst day of my life. My heart is gone. My soul is gone, her sister posted on Instagram. I'm so happy that we said we loved you. I'm so happy that I got to see your face one last time, she posted, talking about seeing her the Thursday before. Her family has set up a GoFundMe page, and I will leave that link in the description below, and her friends were to hold a balloon release at 7.30 p.m. on September 3rd at Terry Hershey Park in Houston. I'm recording this on September September 3rd, so I don't have images of that out yet, but I will include them in here if I'm able to get them before I edit and publish this. Not only was Janae remembered by her family, by those closest to her, but because of her fame, she also rubbed shoulders with a lot of other famous people. Cardi B called her a sweetheart, and that sentiment seemed to be echoed through anybody who knew her. I get the impression that she was a very kind person. Uh, Janae was just a light to be honest, and not just outside of the home, but she was very protective of me, protective of her dad, and she just was always the sweetest thing. Bow Wow commented on her most recent picture, stop playing, we just spoke on Thursday. Don't do me like this, yo, nah. Brittany Bangas said, please tell me this is not real. Mercedes, I am so sorry. You did not deserve this at all. You had your whole life ahead of you. I remember all our times we had, and you have always been the sweetest woman in the world. God bless you and your family. I am sorry, Mercedes. Rest in heaven. Drake even dedicated his new album, Certified Lover Boy, to Janae and another friend who passed away in January of 2021, Nadia Natuli. And I feel like her mother summed it up beautifully. She said she was so famous in her world and so loved in ours. Rest in peace, Janae. If you are experiencing domestic violence or stalking, or you believe that you're being stalked, I want you to reach out for help. Call the National Domestic Violence Hotline and they will be able to connect you with resources. I will put the number on the screen. Please don't suffer alone. It doesn't help anything when you suffer alone. And you are not the only one going through something like that. So many people do, and we do it alone, and that just gives more power to the perpetrators. Let's take back our power. Contact somebody who can help you. Until I see you again, stay safe.